I will go ahead and introduce Sandy Rufo, who is a statewide health insurance benefits advisor from the Office of the Insurance Commissioner. And Sandy is here to give us a brief overview, having signed up for Medicare myself a few years ago, it's, this is a sip from a fire hydrant, so hang on to your socks. And she will give us a brief overview of what you need to know in an unbiased way about signing up for Medicare and all the various components thereof. And I'm sure that Sandy will be happy to ask, answer questions both during the presentation and afterwards. If you haven't signed in, please go ahead and do so up here. And we have some information about our groundbreaking, which is coming up on the 23rd for our assisted living across the street. And we also have some uh, emergency kits here that you might like to have one in your car. There's all sorts of useful goodies in there just, just for general purposes and in case you know that inevitable flat tire happens. So feel free to take one of those, we have plenty. And with that, I will just remind you that although the camera is not pointed at any of you, we are live streaming this on YouTube. So uh, your questions will be heard to the general public. But Sandy's the only one that will be on camera as soon as I sit down. Aren't I the lucky one? Aren't you the lucky one? And with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to Sandy. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to see that you guys have ventured out. That's, that's really a good thing. The, uh, as mentioned, my name is Sandy Rufo, and I have been a volunteer with the Office of Insurance Commissioner, and we're now going on 13 years. So I've seen a lot of changes, um, a lot of plans coming and going, a lot of different things. Um, Oh, as you may know, open enrollment for Medicare starts October uh, 15th through December 7th. Because I do not have the final versions of the drug plans, the MedAdvantage plans, um, I have I pieced together some things that, uh, that give the rates as a handout for you. But what I'd like is if you have a need to see the final Office of Insurance Commissioner uh, version of either the drug plans or the MedAdvantage plans, on your chair there is a um, form that um, we can get the final version mailed to you. Or as I'm talking, if there is anything else that you think that we want mailed to you, check that other box. Um, if you would rather have a uh, individual counseling session, again, on the bottom of the form, please fill that out and I will give you a call. So, the um, role of Sheba is basically, it's a volunteer um, arm of the Office of Insurance Commissioner. And our role is to give unbiased advice. One of the uh, most the uh, frequent questions I get uh, from clients that I talk with is please tell me which plan to select. Which one should I get? Which drug plan should I get? We're not able to do that. We can give you options. We usually give you up to three that you can make a decision, but we will not, uh, we will not tell you which plan to enroll in. Um, our sponsor is called Sound Outreach. Uh, they're located on Martin Luther King in uh, uh, Tacoma, and uh, they sponsor our SHIBA program. What you can expect today is, is a pretty high level review of Medicare. And um, we're going to start with um, a recap of the terminology so, when, uh, so we're all on the same page. There's not one expectation that you guys can remember everything I'm telling you today. <laughs> You're gonna get pieces you'll remember, but not everything. Um, the terminology um, that we're going to go over, uh, number one, Medicare is for individuals 65 and older. If you 
know people who are on Medicare and they're less than 65, it's most likely because they're on uh, Social Security disability. If they're on that for two years, then they become Medicare eligible. For those of you that are getting close to 65 uh, and you're enrolling in Medicare for the first time, you have a, uh, a it's called a 313 rule. You have three months before your birthday, you have your birthday month, and three months after to enroll in Medicare. And once you do enroll in Medicare, um, there it is. This is the card that you'll be getting. This is referred to as a red, white, and blue card. So if you're talking to a volunteer or the doctor's office, they'll say, uh, show me your red, white, and blue card. They're going to, down here in the corner, they're going to have an effective date for Part A, which is hospital, and Part B, which is physician and outpatient. Most often than not, the dates are going to be exactly the same. However, there's sometimes people are still working and they're going to enroll in Part A and defer Part B. So there may be an, op sometimes you'll see a different date. But this is, this is your Medicare uh, card. Uh, you enroll uh, for Medicare on, so, uh, through Social Security. Now, before COVID, um, you used to be able to enroll for uh, Part A and B online. I still believe you can do that. Uh, some people that have deferred B used to have to go to Social Security. And I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe you now can enroll for Part B only online, which is a change. So as alluded to, Part A is, covers your hospital benefits. And I've given you a yellow handout on your chair. And again, this form um, is for 2021. But there's a couple changes I've crossed out for 2022. On the first side, you're going to see Part A benefits. These are hospital benefits. And as you look down this, this is what your Part A covers. Your Part A premium should be a free premium to you if you worked over 40 quarters, which equates out to about 10 years. But Part A is a free premium, and it covers hospitalization. You can see that there is a um, deductible that you need to pay. Um, and then for 2022, um, I can't get a, a guaranteed amount, but it appears it's over 1,500. It's greater than 1,500. On the flip side is part B, as in boy. This covers physician and outpatient services. For 2022, you're going to see a de uh, Part B annual deductible of $217. This means that the first bill that you get in uh, 2022, the first 217 of Part B charges is your responsibility. After that, uh, then Medicare uh, will kick in. You can see they cover lab, uh, home health care, and Part B also covers outpatient uh, services. So if you have an outpatient surgery, it is paid to Part B. Um, parts, yeah? Is okay to ask questions? Uh -huh. Sure. Okay, uh, I noticed it says a blood test for Part B are covered. Now, what kind of blood test are we talking about? Um, look at the asterisk uh, for that. It's, uh, it's that diamond-shaped asterisk. It says in the hospital, you, uh, if the hospital gets blood from a blood bank, there's no charge. You see that? 
Yeah, okay. So I'm wondering about blood panels where a doctor might be looking for specific things. Uh, that will be a Part B test. Uh, that will be a service covered under Part B, is it, boy? That's what I'm looking at is Part B. Yeah. Okay. So you could get a full blood panel as part of Part B? It actually is going to be, uh, it's going to be under uh, the physician services. The uh, medical, where it says medical expenses, right. any lab tests that they order will be paid under Part B. It will? Oh, uh -huh. okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so we've gone through the, the alphabet soup. We have A is hospital, B is physician and outpatient. You may have heard of Part C. Part C, the most common name, is a uh, Medicare Advantage plan. And most plans, MedAdvantage plans, have both medical and drugs built into them. And I'll be going into more detail um, about uh, both original Medicare and the Part C plans. The Part C plans consist predominantly of HMO, the, that which stands for Health Maintenance Organization. Does anybody have an idea what an HMO or what plan might be an HMO? Kaiser is an example. Um, and again, I'll go into more detail. And then there is PPO uh, plans under MedAdvantage. That stands for Preferred Provider Organization. Um, the other alphabet that, uh, is part D. That's your drug plan. And drug, uh, your drug plans will have co-pays involved, they'll have deductibles, they'll have the donut hole, and sure enough, there's going to be penalties involved if you don't enroll timely. Um, so I'll go into more of that. The last pieces of, of uh, Medicare will be a Medicare supplement, also known as a Medigap plan. And these are basically, if you're in the original Medicare side of things, uh, they pick up what Medicare doesn't cover. And I'll be handing out a list so we can go over that in more detail. Um, let's see here. Thanks. What I am handing out to you is a high level picture of what your choices are when you elect Medicare. This is called a, uh, I call this the, the, the Medicare Pathways. And this is really a critical piece for you to remember. That when you are looking at getting your benefits from Medicare, think of yourself at a fork in the road. And you have two directions to go to. One direction is called Original Medicare. Original Medicare consists of having Part A, Part B, you would buy a standalone drug plan, and then most people will purchase a Medicare supplement or a Medigap. And again, I'll we'll dig, uh, dig a little deeper into those later. The other pathway that you might want to consider are called Medicare Advantage plans. And um, you can see that um, they, they you are required to have Part A and you are required to have Part B to enroll in a MedAdvantage. Um, Medicare is administered by the Centers for Medicaid, Medicare Services. So if you are on the original Medicare pathway, all of your claims are gonna be processed by Medicare. If you are on the Medicare Advantage pathway, those claims are going to be processed by the MedAdvantage plan that you select. So they're going to pay the bills and they're gonna let you know um, where you're at for deductibles, et cetera. Um, anybody in here still working? Okay. If you have an employer plan and you're Medicare eligible, your employer plan is going to be primary and uh, Medicare is secondary. And it's uh, recommended if you're still working, please take 
uh, part A, it's a free benefit. It'll act as your secondary and defer part B, as in boy. Um, I have a question. Uh -huh. uh, if I'm not working, but if I start working again, mm -hmm. then, uh, should I still see if the employer has a part A? If, if you have an employer plan offered to you and it's reasonable and makes sense for you, you can then tell Social Security you want to defer part, part B until such time as you... Um, well, I have part B. You don't have to have it. Oh, I already do. But... Oh, okay, but if you start working yeah. and you get an employer plan, you can tell Social Security, I want to defer it, I want to stop the hundred and forty eight dollars. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be focusing today strictly on uh, Medicare benefits, either the original Medicare pathway or the Med Advantage. If you have access to other options such as the VA, such as Tricare, such as you're a federal employee, um, please and you want to volunteer to talk to you, uh, please put down that you want a uh, volunteer to call because there's special rules and special considerations for you to think about. So um, I am going to now focus strictly on uh, original Medicare and Part A. As I've said, that Part A premium is free. You're going to have an annual deductible, which is on that yellow sheet, that's per benefit period, if you're hospitalized. Um, you'll also notice that there's a, in Part A, there's a skilled nursing facility benefit. Skilled nursing means just that. You have to be in the hospital for three midnights, and when you're discharged, to a skilled nursing facility, you can only receive Medicare benefits if, if you require skilled care. You need physical therapy, occupational therapy, you need IV therapy. If you are custodial, meaning uh, it is just, you need help dressing and someone taking care of you, that is not a benefit that Medicare is going to pay for. So only skilled nursing facility. If you're in a skilled nursing facility and you come in with a skilled service, but you've decided it's not for me, I'm not participating, once you plateau, they're going to boot you off. They're going to ask you to go home and, and figure it out. But it's, it's, once you plateau, or they'll decertify you, and then you'll no longer be considered skilled. Is that is that called is that called uh, getting to a point where you're not progressing? Is that yeah, another way? Yeah, exactly. Of Plateauing and not progressing, exactly the same. And sometimes people are so debilitated they just can't do it, and um, and the family members and, and staff are really trying to encourage them, but they won't get paid if they uh, if you do not meet a skill criteria, or, or it will become private pay. So, okay, your part B, which is your, uh-huh. Sorry. Okay, it's fine. Uh, let's see, part A has home health care. Uh-huh, again, skilled care. It's pretty tough to uh, be discharged from a hospital uh, under home health care, but sometimes there's wound uh, situations that can be taken care of by a home health aid. But by and large, uh, same uh, criteria, you have to meet some type of skilled care. Medical equipment? Uh, that will be covered under Part B. B, because okay. mm -hmm. I was going to ask about a new machine. Um, that will be a sort of under Part B, that's, pay that's payable. Okay, but, does that have to be designated by a doctor? Yes, yeah. I've had one for 20 years. Uh, you know, I don't need to go to a doctor anymore, I'll just buy one cash. Uh -huh. If it gets covered. Uh, yeah, it should get covered. At one point in time, a Medicare was requiring you to go to certain uh, DME providers, but um, that appears to be dropped right now. But if you go to a, uh, the next time you buy one, you ask them if Medicare will pay for this. They'll, they'll know. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, 
Now your Part B premium is again, physician and outpatient. In this year, 2021, the Medicare Part B premium uh, was 148.50. It is going up in 2022, a whopping 10 bucks. It's a big jump. Uh, it's going up to 148.60. I was shocked when I saw that because usually they're very small increments. Um, in addition, um, Part B has an annual deductible. And that annual deductible was 203 this year, and it's going up to 217 in 2022. One other thing about Part B that I want you to be aware of is that uh, your Part B premium is what they call income adjusted. So if you're making an income um, higher than 87,000, just be prepared for, um, you'll be paying a little bit more for that premium. Um, with the original Medicare pathway, you have a welcome to Medicare exam. Do not think that this is a full blown physical because it's not. It's a checklist where it, to establish a baseline on you, but it's, it's free but uh, it's, it's just going over your health. And uh, the intent is only to record your medical history. There's, again, no in-depth physical. Is this all online? Um, it's in your Medicare and You book, which um, I'll be dropping off once they come in, probably within a week, I'm hoping there'll be a supply here. There you go. It'll be, that's what it looks like. Thank you. Um, Okay, so the other part of original Medicare is your drug plan. And this is a, a sample of the drug prices for 2022. It's a standalone, it's part of the original Medicare pathway. Um, you can join a drug plan, uh, if you're just coming into Medicare, you can select the drug plan. Or if you're already in Medicare, you can wait uh, for the open enrollment period, October 15th through December 7th. Whatever drug plan you're in now, uh, if you're in original Medicare and you w wish to change, uh, you can do so during that open enrollment period. Um, and you change once a year. You can change once a year, October 15th through December 7th, to be effective January 1. As the Part B premium, this is also income adjusted. So again, a, more than 87,000, uh, you're gonna be paying for a higher uh, income uh, for your premium. The um, The uh, premiums this year are for 2022, excuse me, a range from a low of $7.70 to a high of $101 per month. You may notice on that, but most of them have an annual deductible that has to be met. And this is the, really the dilemma for people where they're just on tier, really low generic drugs, tier one. You'll never meet your deductible, most likely. And it is because of that, you may be best just getting the cheapest plan out there. If in fact you have quite a expensive drugs or you are taking quite a few, my recommendation is, is that you have a Sheba volunteer um, run a plan finder for you. And we will give you the lowest annual uh, drug costs out of, out of these 2022 plans and see what works for you. I can't stress enough how these formularies change every single year. In fact, they change mid-year, un unbeknownst to a lot of people. But the, the, the full cost of the drug uh, changes, the formulary changes, they move. You might have had a tier one drug this year and they've switched it to a tier three. 
every single year i really encourage you to have your drug plan reviewed neil do you do that here oh yes neil but in addition um a sheba volunteer uh will if you call will be able to help you um there is a penalty if you fail to enroll timely if you are working and you quit you have 63 days to get in without penalty if you're new to medicare you have your birthday month and uh three months after to pick up a drug plan without penalty but after that the penalty for not enrolling timely is 33 cents a month for every month you fail to enroll and that's a forever penalty wow. i don't know and i have uh, the drug plan started in 2006 and i have people that fail to enroll they were very healthy I don't need drugs, I'm okay. And now uh, we're up to probably 50, almost 50 some dollars in penalties tacked on to the premium that you're going to pay. So it's, it's really something to keep in mind. So even if your medication is lower than the $480 a year deductible? Get the cheapest. cheapest. Okay. Yeah. And you know, as a little side on this, the um, some people with high cost meds, I'm finding, will get the cheapest drug plan, but they'll also turn to an app called GoodRx. Have you guys heard of that? Yeah. It, they do a pretty darn good job. I, I can't speak for how long the prices hold. I, know, I really don't know anything about them. But I do know that people are having better success with GoodRx than what their drug plan. So uh, put that app on your phone if, uh, if you have such a thing. Um, one thing I failed to mention with your Part B, uh, this, uh, this premium rate based on income, they look at income of two years ago. So for those of you that might be working or have been retired for less than two years, uh, they're, to uh, establish your Part B premium, they're going to look at your, uh, your forms of two years ago, your, your work dollars. That's the same thing with Part D, the drug plan. It's, uh, it's going to be income adjusted based on income of two years ago. Now, have you heard of the gap? Have you heard of the donut hole? Both, both the same. What the gap in the donut hole means as part of your drug plan, it's a calculation that begins January 1 of each year and ends December 31. So it's a full calendar year. And what the driver is for you getting into the donut hole with your drug plan is the full cost of your drugs. It's not what you pay out of pocket. It's the full cost that drives it. And you may not even see that, but you're going to be getting benefit explanations from the drug company that's going to say you have, you have so far to go before you reach the donut hole. A lot of people never ever reach it. A lot of people are in the donut hole in January. So when the full cost of your drugs is $4,430, you have entered the donut hole. So any out of pocket that you pay, any deductibles that you've met, um, the, um, and, and once you earn the gap, what you pay will apply to, to you getting out. To get out of the donut hole, you have to have a total out of pocket of 7,050. It's crazy, but that's where we are. So the gap actually closed in 2020. It was a point in time where in the gap you were paying up to 75% of brand name, 50% of generics. In the gap, should you be so lucky to be in the gap, you only pay 25% of the retail cost of the drug. So, and that's both for generics as well as uh, for brand names. Um, 
if you got in the gap and if you spent seven thousand fifty dollars and you're out you are then what they call catastrophic coverage and the drug cost will only be five percent of the retail value so there there's hope but I, I say it sincerely, there are a large number of people uh, that are in the gap in January. They're, some of these drug prices are just absolutely crazy. Um, as mentioned earlier, I can't stress enough for these very reasons for you to have your drug plan evaluated every year. Neil, call Sheba, whatever, but you need to, you need to understand that. Um, Can I ask you a question? Uh -huh. okay. You said that it, it, once you hit $7,000 total expenditures, or did you say $7,000 out of pocket? Uh, $7,000 out of pocket. Out of pocket. So yeah, it's not the cost of the drug. The cost of the drug will get you in there. And then during the gap, you have to pay 25% of the retail value. But once you're out of pocket, $7,000. Then after that, that's catastrophic. Then it becomes right. catastrophic, right? Yeah. You're going to have to go back to work. <laughs> so. Okay. Now, the last piece of original Medicare, we've done A, we've done B, we've done the standalone drug plan. And the last piece to original Medicare is your Medicare supplement plans, or Medigap, as they're often called. And what I'd like you to do is go to the back page, which is the blue page. And we can start there. Thank you. Okay. Your Medicare supplement plans are, this is what they pick up. This is what's covered. The benefits are standardized throughout the United States. A, a Medigap plan that you buy here, which is in one of these uh, A through N, is going to be exactly the same benefits that you'd buy in Florida, California, Kentucky, wherever. The benefits are standardized. When you look at these, you can see the check marks are what each of these plans cover. So these are not part, these are plans. So plan A, plan B, yada, yada, all the way up to plan N. If you were eligible for Medicare before January of 2020, you may wish to consider a plan F, which is in the far right hand corner. And you will see that everything is checked. Every benefit that's listed here on the left is checked. For those of you that are new to Medicare, uh, the only options are available are the A through N. And the most common plan sold to date is Plan G, right in the middle. Now, what does Plan G not cover? That would be the Part B annual deductible. And remember, the annual deductible I said for Part B is 217 in 2022. But so the first $217, if you get a Medicare supplement, your first doctor bills starting in January, the first 217 will be your cost. Now, I do want to, to stress to you that an individual goes to a doctor. The doctor is only going to get paid 80% of the Medicare allowable. The other 20% is patient responsibility. So you, you are not going to pay the full doctor bill. You're going to pay tw the 20%, the 217 towards the 20%. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, let's go over to plan N, that which is the far under the black. That is very, very similar 
to um, to Plan G, but they uh, they also don't pick up the deductible, and they don't pay for Part B excess charges. And there's one other little stipulation that's uh, in uh, with the asterisk down below. There is a twenty dollar copay with Plan N for non-preventative services. So that means that if you have a plan in and you go to a doctor for a physical and um, what blood tests and others, those are preventative services. You won't be charged that $20 copay. If you go to therapies, occupational therapy, physical therapy, that is going to uh, that is going to be a non-preventative service. And there will be a $20 copay for every uh, session that you have. The $20 is after the billing cycle is done. It is not an upfront copay. And I personally had that at one point in time, and I have to tell you, they wrote it off more times than they ever asked me to pay the $20. They just, you know, when it gets down to six or seven, it's not dollars, it's not worth it for them to, but I want you to be aware there is a copay responsibility with Plan M. Now, when you're looking at a Medicare supplement rate, because the benefits are standardized, all you should be looking for is price, nothing more. So let's go to page, um, the very first page, okay? Let's hypothetically pretend we're looking at a plan G. And so we can see on the first page that Cigna plan G is 185, a plan N is 136. Just turn the page and take your finger down G. Do you see all these strange prices? There is no reason that you need to pay, as an example, to Colonial Pen for a Plan G for $288 when it's sold at Cigna for, uh, was it 136? Oh, excuse me, 185. That's what I mean. It's, if you, a lot of people will say, well, I have Regents. I, I'm familiar with Regents, but, you know, and that's fine. Regents is a great company, but again, since their only role in life is to act as your secondary insurance, my recommendation is look only for price, unless unless you know as a personal choice you you want something else. Yeah, what does with a high deductible? Um, there is plans that uh, let's see. Um, Second yeah, of and at the and then the front, uh, very top up here, right under October, November, you're going to see there's a um, you uh, have a 2,370 deductible for 2021. I don't have the 2022 deductible yet. Did you see? Yeah, I, I, see, okay. I, I see that one of those. What it means is that uh, you can get a low premium, but you have to, uh, they won't start paying until you meet that, that deductible. Okay. So, um, anyway, I guess my message on this is price only. Price is the driver. Um, if that's what you're going to, uh, if you're going to pick up a Medicare supplement. When you go, if you're on original Medicare and you go to a doctor, uh, Medicare, the provider is going to bill Medicare. The Medicare is going to pay the doctor 80% of the Medicare allowable. Medicare is going to bill your Medicare supplement plan. You have nothing more to do. There's no out of pocket except that first 217. And there's no paperwork to mess with, nothing. Also with original Medicare, you can go anywhere in the United States that you wish and see any doctor that takes Medicare. And that's appealing for a lot of people that might want to travel, at least during the winter months, and find some sunshine. <laughs> but they, um, you, you have a lot of freedom with original Medicare. 
Medicare supplement without going through the plan's health screening questionnaire. You have guaranteed issue, no matter if you have stage four cancer, you have guaranteed issue with most of these plans. The, um, when you look on this sheet, there's a pre-existing condition and there's health screening. The health screening means just that rule I gave you, six months from your part B, if you elect these plans, you will have to go through their health screening questionnaire. Going to page five on this, there is one plan, the very last plan, permit Washington Healthcare Authority does not require a health screen. So if you think you wish to, you're in Med Advantage, and you think you want to return to original Medicare, this is the one plan that will not require a health screening questionnaire, but all others will. Um, okay. 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 We're going to move to the other side of the um, the other side of that pathway chart. We're not going to go into Medicare Advantage plans. There are 53 plans to choose from in 2022. A number of the plans um, are called, um, are just your, your run-of-the-mill HMOs or PPOs. There is also plans called special needs plans. They are not on this list, but they will be on the final version uh, from the Office of Insurance Commissioner. The special needs plans are for people that have both Medicare and Medicaid or they're people that are institutionalized. So at one point, maybe five or six years ago, if you had certain medical conditions, you could purchase a special needs plan, but those are no longer being offered. Um, so the, on the final OIC version, you will see the special needs plans. Most of these plans do offer drugs. With the Medicare Advantage plan, you're going to have a primary care physician and specialists are going to have co-pays. I do not know the co-pays as of now. It, again, it will be on the final version, but they average right around $10 to $15 for primary care and $50 for specialists. At least with one Advantage plan, uh, the co-payments are dropping for 2000 that's great. Do you recall the name? Uh, yeah, it's the uh, Primera. Is it one of the Primeras? Yeah. Okay, that's, well that's good news. Um, if you're hospitalized, most of them will have a day one to four, day one to five hospitalization rates. I'd say right around $500, $600. After that, the MedAdvantage plan will pay uh, for the hospital. Um, some of the Med Advantage plans and, uh, are only contracted with certain doctors and certain hospitals. So if your favorite hospital is St. Anthony's, it is possible, and I, I, I do not know the answer, but that Franciscans have not contracted with certain Med Advantage plans. So for that reason, uh, before you sign on any dotted line with any Med Advantage, please make sure that your doctor, all your favorite doctors, and your hospitals are contracted. One of the things I discovered uh, with some agents, not all, but they will look you in the eyes and tell you that your provider is contracted and they're not. Mm -hmm. 
So it's, I've always suggested that you call directly to the office and say, what Medicare Advantage plans are you contracted with? So it's, that's really critical. Because if you do not, uh, your doctor is out of network or possibly your hospital is out of network and that means um, out, of, out of pocket for you. Um, as mentioned, to be enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to have both A and B. There's no getting around it. Now, that is a requirement. Um, many of these plans you can see have zero premium. <laughs> A lot of these plans um, will have drug deductibles, but I've noticed this year they're not as high as the standalones. They, they're all over the board from zero dedu drug deductible to 100, 180. So I think only one plan has a, up to 480. One other thing I noticed uh, for 2022, some plans are now slimming in a medical deductible. I've never heard of this before, but possibly, uh, but there's two plans that I can see are starting it. So um, those plans, let's see. I've got it on the list here. Look, look, Edna and I believe Humana. Is, uh, will be certain plans are going to have, in addition to a drug deductible, you have to meet a medical deductible. Um, the drugs are going to be exactly uh, getting into the gap or the donut hole. The parameters are exactly the same. You're in at uh, 4,430, you're out at 7,050. Same rules apply for that. An HMO, such as Kaiser, uh, is a very strict, closed network. You, If you select Kaiser, you see Kaiser Doctors, Kaiser Facilities, Kaiser Labs, Kaiser PT, OT, which is fine. And that's an HMO. But there's also other HMOs where you, there are community doctors who have contracted. And it's not so tight that you can go within the plan's network of doctors. So when you see HMO, uh, you don't have to panic on that. Um, if anybody does any amount of traveling or wants to travel for any length of time and going out of state, men advantage plans can be problematic. They will always cover routine care. But uh, I mean, excuse me, excuse me, it's not routine care. They will cover emergency care. Uh, routine care will not be covered um, if you're out of state. Um, a lot of the men advantage plans are getting very, um, very creative with their uh, additional benefits. You're going to find dental, you're going to find vision, you're going to find hearing, all of these that are not part of, of the original Medicare side of things. They're now uh, having some uh, transportation is covered. Um, Gym. Gyms are covered. Uh, you're going to find all kinds of little goodies in there. Now, this, it's not going to be full on, but it, you might get a couple hundred dollars for glasses. And so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of goodies in a Medicare Advantage plan and that you might want to consider. Um, important to note, I shared with you the Medigap plans, these here. These do not work with original, uh, with the MedAdvantage. If you're on the original Medicare pathway, that's where you're at. You don't cross the line. If you're on this side, you don't cross the line and try to get a drug plan over here. So you're, you're on one direction or the other. Um, with advantage plans, with if you also have to be, uh, you also go to a drug a pharmacy a network. That is, that's a good point. Yes. Um, so the, uh, these plans, these uh, men advantage plans, do have drugs offered, m the majority of them, and you use their network of pharmacies. So good point, thank you, Neil. Um, let's see. I guess 
Um, so there are state and federal uh, programs available for people that have uh, lower income. The threshold is quite low, but it's uh, if you have a need to uh, ask the criteria, please see Ivan Neal, or you can leave your name and number, and uh, I can give you a call. Um, every situation that you're going to encounter is unique. Uh, and a Shiva volunteer, again, with, if you have any questions, we'll be able to help you out. So if you're thinking um, between a Medicare Advantage plan, I want you to consider your health and your ability to pay, okay? With a, a, a Medicare Advantage plan, if you're healthy, that that's a good, that's not a bad place to be because you're not seeing a doctor, you're not putting out co-pays, etc. Uh, you've got these uh, additional uh, benefits that are available to you. But the problem in if your health starts to change and you need out, you want to go back to original Medicare where. Well, there's no out of pocket, nothing. You can't pass the health screening questionnaire. Remember, six months from part B, after that, you have to go through the plan's health screening questionnaire. If you had a crystal ball, you would know when to jump. So all I can just say, be it, be aware if you're in a meta-managed plan and your health is where you're putting out more money in specialist visits than it would be to, to buy a, a Medicare supplement plan. Just know when to jump. And sometimes if we had a crystal ball, we know, but we don't. Um, the, uh, well, let's see, are you, no, okay. The, in a MedAvantage plan, the other sometimes downside that I'm, uh, based on calls that I get, is that a specialist uh, or a primary care doc refuses to make a referral to a specialist. And that can get kind of frustrating. It can get lost in the system. Um, and uh, so you're waiting and waiting and waiting to see a specialist and, and the plan is denying it. Then you need to get the doctor involved. So these are things that, that you need to understand that there could be a problem, but not always. So in many advanced plans now, uh, uh, you no longer need a referral to see an ophthalmologist. Well, that's good. Seriously? Seriously. Okay, I did not know that. Good. I have a question. Um, you said you need to know when to jump if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, but mm -hmm. you're, say your health declines and mm -hmm. you have needs. It was my understanding that you can't cross that over to Medicare. Absolutely. Every year, there's an open enrollment period. Oh, so you can do Oh, open absolutely. You can go yeah. back to Medicare? Yep. Yeah. Ah, so the, okay. the most you'll do is be locked in for a year. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Um, with the Med Advantage plan, you can see that the premiums are very cost effective. And the reality of it, sometimes that is the best situation economically for people. Um, to, so they just can't afford the 185 a month uh, for the Medicare supplement. So again, Medicare Advantage plans is based on health and ability to pay. At least that's my criteria that I tell people most of the time. Um, if you're thinking the original Medicare pathway, understand that there's no dental, there's no vision, you need to buy separate policies uh, for that. The economics, again, are a factor in purchasing a med sub. Um, but again, there's, there's the no hassle factor with the original Medicare. You, you pay that, that Part B deductible and that's your only responsibility. Um, the other thing, too, is if you're turning 65, I would encourage you to check with your physician's uh, physician um, on you becoming Medicare eligible. We've had a number of calls where uh, the client says, my doctor is no longer taking Medicare patients. So just you know, for your own protection, you might want to check with the office staff if they're willing, if you're an established patient, if they're willing to take you as Medicare. 
because there's certainly people out there that have had to look for a new primary care doctor. Um, the, um, in, in, um, again, same thing with Medic on the Medicare Advantage plan, uh, every single year. If you like the plan, stay in it. You have to do nothing during open enrollment. It will automatically roll over. But again, remember, just like the standalone drug plans, those formularies in Medicare Advantage drug plans change. Prices change, the deductibles change. The, um, so again, it, it might be worth it for you to take a look-see at what's going on in there. Um, if you're able to use a computer and you want to evaluate, uh, the Medicare.gov website is the uh, website that Neil and I use to run drug plan comparisons and to check the MedAdvantage plans. So that is uh, www.medicare.gov. And it'll, it'll walk you through. I don't, the 2022 plans, I don't believe, are posted just yet. But by October 15th, they will be. Um, there's a lot of rules with Medicare. And um, the, uh, when you can enroll, when you fail to enroll, and the penalties. Um, if you're an ever in doubt, uh, call a Shiva volunteer, and we'll try to get that straightened out. Asking your neighbor <laughs> what the rule is is sometimes not a good idea. I mean, there's a lot of people that have been, been uh, twisted around. Um, just a, uh, let's see, so that is basically it on that uh, sheet. If you want anything mailed to you, if you want the final version of OIC, um, the drug standalone drug plan or the Med Advantage list, um, anything, or the part A and B, that yellow piece of paper, anything, uh, just let us know and we'll get that mailed to you. And if I go back to what you were talking about with the uh, uh, Medigap plan, uh -huh. uh, it's a constant main driver, mm -hmm. and it, like on the front page, Cigna uh, has the best cost. Right. And then you said if you don't want to have to fill out a, uh, a questionnaire, mm -hmm. you could go to the last page, right. the Washington State Health okay. Care. Um, um, what are the chances that if you go, say, to Cigna, as an example, mm -hmm. And they send you the questionnaire, and they might say, oh, well, for you, here's this problem. We want to raise the price to. Yeah. The, uh, the rates on here are community based, they're not age based. So uh, the only time you should see a rate increase, if you actually get a plan, uh, is usually about April of each year, and they only go up about anywhere from $2 to $5. Can they turn you down? If they they should not. They should not be able to. I, the the only thing I can think of is if uh, you you have a pre-existing condition and they may exclude that for a three-month period. Uh, they won't pay for just that condition, but they'll pay for everything else. Okay, and then did you say that if you sign up within six months of when you get Part B, they don't send you a questionnaire? No, and what happens is they'll see the telephone numbers for their you call them and an agent is going to uh, complete the application right there with you. And um, they're, then they're going to mail it to you for your signature. So you will know almost immediately whether if they have a problem. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm familiar with both Blue Cross and Mayor and Sigma. Uh -huh. Both good companies. Right. Uh, so I just. Yeah. An another one on the page five, is, which is a lot of people will go for, it, is USAA. That's, that has essentially this, uh, the same rate as Cigna. But again, it's a question of price. It's not a question of the company. All of these Medicare supplement plans are overseen by the Office of Insurance Commissioner. He's watching their claims reserve, claims experience. Um, there is nothing to worry about. Every single one of them have been vetted and are constantly being vetted. Okay? Thank you. Uh-huh. Anything else? Well, I'm glad you came. Now you know.